Hello students, uh, for this audio, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the classical school of thought and uh, its founder or our father of economics, Adam Smith. So the classical school of thought has been described as the beginning of modern economics. It was jump-started by its founder, Adam Smith, who has been described as the father of political economy and the father of economics as we know him today. And his work, The Wealth of Nations, or the complete title of his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, uh, uh, published in 1776, is generally regarded as the starting point of the classical school. With Adam Smith, uh, in the classical school of thought, also with him are Jeremy Bentham, Thomas Robert Malthus, David Ricardo, Jean-Baptiste Say, and John Stuart Mill. They are all the leading economists of this school of thought. The essential features of the classical school are as follows. The entire philosophy of the classical school was based on economic liberalism. The classical writers believed in the following, personal liberty, private property, and individual initiative, as well as private enterprise. The classical features are, the, cl uh, the classical economists firmly believe in laissez-faire, or free market, as I have mentioned in class. This means that the government is best when, uh, when it governs least, or minimal government intervention. The classical economists believe in a market economy based on free market and perfect competition. They also assumed conditions of full employment. They thought that the economy was self-adjusting and tend toward full employment without government intervention. So if you can remember our lecture on uh, supply and demand and the equilibrium point and how price is determined by the market forces of uh, uh, the level of supply and the level of demand, this is basically the contention of the classical school of thought. They believe that individuals, by seeking their own self-interest, would serve the best interest of society. In other words, they believe in the harmony of interests. So if you remember again, I have mentioned in class that uh, the consumer side or the demand side of the market would always want to maximize utility or satisfaction from their purchases. While the other side, the firm side or the production side or the supply side, would always want to maximize profit. And if uh, both of them will act on their so own self-interest without any or minimal government intervention, then eventually both of them will go down to the equilibrium point and meet at the price where both of them are willing to buy and sell respectively. The classical economist or the classical school of thought emphasized the importance of all economic activities, especially the industry. The classical economist provided a method of analyzing the economy and economic laws that operate within them. The classical economist looked at the economy as a whole. That is what we call the macroeconomic approach in our times or in modern times. Okay, So in the classical economic school of thought, uh, there is a firm belief that uh, uh, the economy can function much better if uh, there is minimal or less government intervention. This is the uh, main contention of, of the classical economist. And uh, until now, this classical perspective is still being considered by many economic uh, policymakers.